Good evening from San Ignacio Town. With the 9 o'clock news, I am Patrick Jones. In the headlines, major flooding is reported in the Toledo District. Speednet wins appeal versus the Public Utilities Commission. And preparations begin for Belize International Film Festival. Details of these and other stories are coming up after these messages from our sponsors. Singers, songwriters, performers, this is for you! Welcome to Belize! It's the National Song Competition Elimination Round, and 2015 is going to be big, big, big! Do you have what it takes to represent your districts in the finals? We are looking for a Belize song who bring cool seed. Want someone who make I fall in love with my country all over again? Do you think you have just a song? Then sign up! What about your carnival song? You know what song who make I broke out every time I hear it play? Put up your hand, Belize, that we What year is you ask? It no matter. We have a senior and a junior in both categories. Just sign up. This year, we'll bring the elimination round to an area near you. Corozal, Orange Walk, Dangriga, Punta Gorda, Belize City, San Ignacio, Pepopan, San Pedro, and Benke. Elimination rounds will be held June 25th through July 12th. Pick up your registration form from the place at any of the Houses of Culture Countrywide or online at www.nichebelize.org or call us at 227-2110. Register today and win a chance to be a part of the national competition on August 8 in Belize City. The National Song Competition 2015, sponsored by the National Celebrations Commission and Atlantic International Bank. Bring it! Take a moment, feel the rhythm of life. It keeps beating. What if you took just a few seconds of every day to help someone else? Every minute. It's yours and mine, mine, mine. It's amazing how the smallest things can have the greatest impact. Make a difference. Pay it forward. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Missing your favorite games while they're actually being played? Watch your games and sporting events live with Central TV and Internet's incredible My TV. Simply log on to www.mitv.bz to get easy access to 25 channels, no matter where you are. With Central TV and Internet's My TV, you're always in the game. Today's engine technology demands an oil of choice for your vehicles, engines, and equipment. PureGuard is available in Belize in light and heavy automotive, hydraulic, and automatic transmission lubricants in all current oil grades and specifications. Certified by the American Petroleum Institute, API, PureGuard is exclusively distributed in Belize by West Track Limited. So, give your engine the treatment it deserves by using PureGuard products and lubricants. PureGuard, premium products that will perform for you. Here now is the news in details. 
The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, was activated this morning in uh, the Toledo district following major flooding in rural areas of that district. Overnight rains caused rivers and streams to overflow their banks, and by 7 o'clock this morning, flooding was affecting Blue Creek, San Jose, Santa Elena, and San Pedro Colombia villages. NEMO teams were dispatched to the affected areas to assess the situation, but their progress was hampered throughout the day by flood waters, which covered parts of the roads and crucial bridges linking the communities. Our news team has traveled to the affected areas and we will be having reports on the flooding throughout the weekend. Reports received so far say that some families have lost household items and foodstuff due to the flooding. The Belize Court of Appeal closed its second session for 2015 today and both of Belize's major telecommunications companies were represented in court for decisions. We start with the smaller of the two, Speednet Communications Limited, the parent company of Smart. In 2011, it filed a lawsuit against the Public Utilities Commission concerning fees payable for frequency authorization for its telephone service. The PUC set a charge of $792,000 for a total of 7,925 channels, charged at $100 per channel via 14 point-to-point -point links of separate bandwidth. But Speednet argued that it should pay far less and filed a suit. Justice Oswell Legal dismissed the claim in the Supreme Court and Speednet appealed in December of 2013. Today, the panel of justices, Manuel Sosa, Samuel Awich, and Minette Javis Bertram, dismissed the appeal except in one respect, which will cost the commission. Senior counsel Fred Lamour is the attorney for the Public Utilities Commission. This is an appeal against uh, the judgment of Justice Legal, which was lodged by Speednet communications the public utilities commission had assessed certain uh, charges uh, in the schedule to the PUs, to the telecommunications act for speednet to be paid uh, speednet's contention is that the fees are too large onerous and too expensive and that it was due to misinterpretation of the uh, schedule of fees by puc so they asked the court to clarify the meaning of the schedule. Uh, the court rejected the appeal, but partly accepted the argument of Speednet. So we said the appeal was allowed to a certain extent, meaning that the fees are not to be paid in advance, but should be paid in arrears. Since Speednet has paid PUC the fees in advance, the court ordered that PUC should pay interests on over $700,000 which Speednet paid to PUC as fees in advance, meaning that uh, PUC would have to make payment of 6% interest on that money back to Speednet. But the court says, however, since Speednet is to pay fees to PUC, they can set it off against future payments. Lomar says the Court of Appeal helped to settle a major issue discussed in the court below, the exact meaning of the word channel as used in the schedule to the 2002 telecommunications regulations on licensing, classification and fee structure. It's a very important case because there is a schedule of fees and uh, there is misinterpretation for the word channel. Uh, the PUC levies fees for the number of channels that the telecommunications use to make phone calls, internet services, and so on and so forth. And uh, if the court had accepted PU's uh, Speednet's argument, it means that Speednet would have been paying little or nothing for those channels. The court accepted PUC's interpretation of the channels so that the court upheld that the 700, over 700,000 charge annually for those fees is the correct fee to be paid. So all the doubt is removed, all the confusion is removed. The PUC won 80% of its costs in the appeal. Lomar says taxpayer money will not be used to repay Speednet. 
Senior Counsel Andrew Marshallek argued the case in both courts, and colleague Lee Chung Barrow appeared to receive the judgment on his behalf. In Belize City today, Belize's mental health practitioners gathered to discuss the issue of mental health among the elderly and aged population of Belize. Belize has long had a young population, but increasingly as they get older, they are afflicted by certain disorders including depression, Alzheimer's disease, anxiety, and dementia. They also suffer bereavement from loss of family members, both young and old. About 15% of Belize's over 60 population have uh, assessed or that should be have accessed a mental health clinic for such problems. Practitioners are being shown the latest information as part of the plan of action to address these issues, as explained by nursing administrator in the Ministry of Health's mental health unit, Nurse Eleanor Bennett. Um, we started talking about normal aging, what happens, what are some of the changes that one can expect um, in the normal process, and then from there we move into changes that um, signal some kind of problem and so we talked about um, dementia and Alzheimer's disease and the different types of dementia. We talked about depression in the elderly um, and other disorders and we talked about anxiety disorders in the elderly and we are going to talk about bereavement and grief a little bit later on. Okay, now, um, does Belize have any statistics with regard to uh, these types of illnesses and, and mental health issues, how many, how, how many Belizeans does it affect? Well, we have statistics up on how many people seek services for these disorders, and it does not necessarily, of course, mean that that is the prevalence in the entire country. So what I can tell you from our statistics, about 15% um, of the people who seek treatment at our clinics are over the age of 60. Mm -hmm. and. Um, um, so um, it tells us that uh, these disorders are highly, relatively highly prevalent among the elderly. Nurse Bennett tells us that services for older persons are available and they do not have to suffer in silence. Well, um, the message that the facilitator is that the Aloisi is getting across is that early detection, if you detect the problem early, the response to treatment is much better. So we uh, we advise people who might have some concerns about the elderly relatives suffering from some kind of mental health condition that they seek help. And um, there are mental health clinics all over the country. We have psychiatrists who can conduct assessments and make diagnoses of the problem and recommend treatment. So. Um, the advice is not to um, suffer silently, not to ignore things as they start, and not to wait until things progress to a point where treatment is more difficult. The workshop took place at the Belize Institute of Management and was facilitated by Dr. Amy Aloisi, an assistant professor at the Department of Psychiatry and Neurology at the Icahn School of Medicine and Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. She specializes in the diagnosis and management of Alzheimer's disease. Police in Corozal are investigating a case of suspected arson and car theft. Police say that yesterday morning, a resident of Louisville Village, Corozal, went to the station to report that three days earlier, his sister's Ford Ranger pickup truck was stolen from the junction of San Narciso and Louisville villages. The theft occurred between 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock on Monday night. Police say that on Tuesday, the vehicle was found in Yo Chen village completely destroyed by fire. Investigations by the police continue. Earlier this year, former directors of Belize Telemedia Limited and several companies that assisted in its management prior to the first nationalization by the government of Belize in 2009 won a judgment in a court of appeal 
that declared them free of responsibility for uh, financing Great Belize Productions, parent company for Great Belize Television, Channel 5, to the tune of $10 million and then divesting it away from BTL in the wake of the nationalization by government. BTL sued and won summary judgment before then Supreme Court Justice Samuel Awich. But after he moved up to the Court of Appeal, his colleagues overruled that judgment in March of this year. Now, BTL has won leave to appeal the case to the Caribbean Court of Justice, which is hearing the separate but concurrent nationalization cases, which are pending a decision. BTL's attorney is Michael Young, and he spoke with reporters after court this afternoon. The Court of Appeal made its judgment on the basis that there was a deed of indemnity and also there was a clause of indemnity in the Articles of Association that really destroyed the cause of action as against the directors, um, the, the wrongs that we say were done to the company whilst the company was under the control of the Ashcroft Group. So fundamentally, the Court of Appeal upheld their position that the acts were protected by the deed of indemnity. And we have challenged the, or we are challenging, I should say, the decision of the Court of Appeal, which of course we treat nonetheless with respect, but we differ and um, are going to the CCJ to say that these wrongs were done to the company and even if the deed of indemnity is a shield in relation to those acts, it does not extinguish the wrong and does not make clean what was not clean. So we say that in, in any effect, um, the wrongs were done. The company was injured in a very substantial way, more than $10 million, and we maintain that the matter is one which should go to full trial before. BTL is being opposed by senior counsel Eamon Courtney on behalf of the former BTL directors including Philip Zuniga and Jose Alpuche on behalf of Channel Overseas Investments Limited and its related companies. Courtney says he does not expect BTL will get very far at the CCJ. Well, it's difficult to... Um respond to that, Daniel, because quite frankly, the Belize Telemedia Media is entitled to carry the matter further, and they have chosen to do that. Um, certainly, my clients had hoped that this would have been the end of the road, because they enjoy the benefit of an indemnity in the articles of the company, and therefore it's difficult to understand how it is that Telemedia expects to carry this forward, hope to get a judgment, and then only to be met with an indemnity that requires the company to indemnify my clients. Um, but they want to go to the CCJ, and so we are, of course, forced to go there. Young and BTL now have 90 days to file the case before the CCJ. You are watching the 9 o'clock news. Stay tuned for more of the day's stories right after these messages. Belize Camping Experience would like to thank everyone who makes BCE successful and meaningful. To our summer camp supporters and volunteers who came from communities across Belize. To all who supported, contributed, and volunteered with our Harvest for Kids project. Funds raised through last year's rice and corn crop will help maintain BCE's children's programs through 2015. You can also support BCE by buying your bag of Circle R Premium Rice with the Harvest for Kids logo, now in a new package. Together we can and will make a positive difference in this beautiful country of Belize. You too can ride off into the sunset. 
Milan motorbikes are very affordable. There's a high availability for parts and a wide selection of models to choose from. My Milan, my bike. Available countrywide. Patience. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Singers, songwriters, performers, this is for you! Welcome to Believe! It's the National Song Competition Elimination Round, and 2015 is going to be big, big, big! Do you have what it takes to represent your districts in the finals? We are looking for a Believe song who bring cool seed. While someone make I fall in love with my country all over again. Do you think you have just a song? Then sign up! What about a carnival song? You know a song who make I broke out every time I hear it play? What age you ask? It no matter. We have a senior and a junior in both categories. Just sign up. This year we'll bring the elimination round to an area near you. Corozal, Orange Walk, Dangriga, Punta Gorda, Belize City, San Ignacio, Bebopan, San Pedro, and Benke. Elimination rounds will be held June 25th through July 12th. Pick up your registration form from the place at any of the Houses of Culture Countrywide or online at www.nichebelize.org or call us at 227-2110. Register today and win a chance to be a part of the national competition on August 8 in Belize City. The National Song Competition 2015, sponsored by the National Celebrations Commission and Atlantic International Bank. Bring it! Welcome back to the 9 o'clock news. Graduation ceremonies were held over the course of the last couple of days for children who took part in the police initiative known as the GREAT program. GREAT stands for Gang Resistance and Education Program. Standard 3 and Standard 5 children attending the Bishop Martin Roman Catholic Primary School received their certification of participation on Thursday. On hand for the graduation was the coordinator of GREAT Program in San Ignacio, Corporal Jason Jones. He was assisted in the distribution of the certificates by the acting officer commanding Community Police Senior Superintendent Chester Williams and the officer commanding San Ignacio Police Superintendent Dale Thompson. Earlier this week, we reported on last weekend's detention of five Belizeans by Guatemalan authorities. The group, including PG Town Councillor Ashton McKenzie, endured hours of abuse at the hands of Guatemalan military officials. Initial reports to the media from Chief Executive Officer in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Lawrence Sylvester, were that the men were detained because they were being disorderly. But in an interview with PGTV earlier this week, that assertion was flatly denied by the group who sought to set the record straight and clear their names. You know, we saw military personnel while in this establishment and they, you know, came rushing in and demanded that we exit the place because, you know, we're in Guatemalan territory according to them. Yeah, but at, at no point we were intoxicated or anything like that. Yeah, right. So, sure. so the, the information which, which uh, has been released stating that we were intoxicated and behaving this other is totally incorrect. Right? We were simply there having a meal. Okay. And you know, that is where they came in and insisted that we leave 
And you know, since we were there, we, we went to the, the the plan was to purchase like sodas and stuff for the upcoming Father's Day, and that was when you know we, Mitchell, since he's um, he could speak the Spanish language, we he asked that we on our way out if we could purchase. And when we had, we approached that place, that is where another supervising officer came in, and he appeared intoxicated and demanded that they surround and detain us for, you know, being there and, you know, they, they made up this entire story that we were intoxicated and so on to detain us. So that was what really transpired. <coughs> like the fellows mentioned, it was quite, quite hostile. We were treated with great hostility by the, the military forces. The police forces, I must commend them for the course of courtesy that they extended to us in terms of allowing us to use telephone um, if we wanted to use the, the bathroom um, what else if we wanted like water or so to drink we actually just gave them the, the money to go and buy the water and stuff for us but it was extremely frightening i mean running four miles with, with weapons pointed at you and there was one point at which we stopped and the officer went out we were instructed to face like the grassy portion and the officer instructed, the superior officer instructed those below him to crank their weapons. Um, then him, you know, so I was I was shocked. I have never been that close to, to weapon and, and a situation like that in the past. So it was extremely frightening for me. But I must commend my colleagues for main, maintaining their composure and their cooperation throughout the, the, the course of our detention over there in, in Guatemala. The five Belizeans were detained in the Guatemalan village of Santa Cruz, which is not very far from Halacte. The group was released last Sunday and came back into Belize via the western border. A formal protest has reportedly been sent to Guatemala City regarding the alleged abuse of the Belizeans by the military officers in Guatemala. The 10th annual Belize International Film Festival to be held in the seaside resort destination of Placentia is now a month away and the media blitz has begun. Filmmakers from 38 countries submitted entries to this year's event and selections have been made. Festival coordinator is Suzette Zaiden. About, we had about 111, submission, 111 submissions from 38 different countries. We have, we're announcing the official selection today, um, which is about 50 films from 23 different countries that made the final cut. Um, our festival this year is gonna take place in Placencia at the Belize Ocean Club Convention Center, which is called the Shore House. It's gonna last from July 17th uh, to the 19th, which is pretty much a very compact weekend. Starts a Friday and it ends a Sunday. So we have, all the opening red night, um, the opening red carpet gala is going to happen beginning at 5:30 on Friday. We're going to have a double header to open the festival, which is a screening of the Belizean telenovela La Isla Bonita, as well as a film from Nigeria called Half of a Yellow Sun. Um, as per usual on the opening night, usually the directors of these films are there to present the films. So. Um, as well as you know, networking, uh, party, there's official ceremony, announcements are made. While the feature films to be shown are mostly in the international domain, Belize does have a presence in the short film and the music video categories, the latter of which is exclusive to Belizeans. Zaiden says the films are as varied in origin and subject matter as they are colorful and recognizable. Um, well, we have four entries from Belize this year, which means that four of them will be competing for the award of most notable Belizean film. Um, we have two shorts, uh, one from Shelby Castillo called Her Beast. It's a short, it's a three-minute animation. Um, we have I Had to Do It from Raspin. Uh, it's a short about domestic violence. Um, it's about, I, I don't remember the length, but it's short. <laughs> Um, so that, that will be screening there. There is one from Gales Point called Butchula, Hope for the Hawks Bill. And um, I, a, 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 another one that uh, I'm trying to think. Ah! Very good. Very good. So just moving quite on. But 
but we also have 50 music videos that are from Belizean, um, that are made in Belize and featuring Belizean artists. That's a category just for Belize. The event will be held from July 17th to the 19th at the Belize Ocean Club in Placencia, and the final closing ceremony and award show will be carried on local television, Channel 5. The Yaksha Conservation Trust continues to work with farmers and residents of rural Toledo in advancing best practices designed to ensure the sustainable use of local resources for generations to come. Tonight, we share with you a minute documentary on part of the work being done by Yaksha. Belize's forests are some of the most important forests in the world. They provide a home for many plants and animals and produce clean air for us to breathe. These plants and animals have been an important part of our everyday lives and culture for thousands of years. Over 70% of the Toledo district is covered with forests. This means that most of us who live here in Toledo live very close to it but we have lost more than 16% of our forest in the last 30 years. We Belizeans are not separate from these forests. We are a part of them. We need them for our food, for our clean water, to build our homes, and even for our medicine. We need them for a healthy and happy life. The many different ways that we use and rely on the forest are made possible by the many different plants and animals that are found within the forest. This is known as biodiversity. Having many different plants and animals in the forest, in the savanna, and in the rivers is a good thing. We need biodiversity. For forests to grow and be healthy, they need as many different types of plants and animals in them as possible because each different plant or animal has to play its role. When all of these different living things working together, we call their work an ecosystem. A forest is an ecosystem. A savanna is an ecosystem. A river is an ecosystem. But in every ecosystem, all of the plants and animals are linked together. They all depend on each other in some way. This is fragile, and if one type of plant or animal is removed, it can affect the whole ecosystem. You can imagine an ecosystem like an engine. They are both made of many parts working together. If one tiny part is not working properly, it might result in the whole thing not working. Think about how many different plants and animals that you have seen in the forest near your home. And then imagine how complicated all of those links are. To make it easier to understand, we will just look at a very small part of our local forest ecosystem. Nakausari le shak le mokoch res di bangkil la kak emil kap iut moko kahkita lo akin ako nakak le mokoch kowe le shulah ki na kusha mas as tutsi la mokoch iut na kakamset le mokoch chinat le shul si kere chinat le kowe lo ah ki si kere chinat si sigbal le kak em o kana kero sil na Tingkat ka kamsil le makoch chinat, re na kwang ka makoch chinat yut lisulak bahki kwang ka bahki chinat tis kusbar re na kwang ka chit chiraklal. 
so mas usha ke na kwa ni tena kutka kamsita mas le mukoch chinat Well, for us, when we cut leaves, we leave like four or five leaves on the tree. So that will be used for another two or three years. But if we cut it like every year, then there is not enough leaf for, for one tree. Maybe you could only get like two or three leaves on every tree while you have to leave the rest. Right. Yeah. Right. But if you cut everything, then I think it would take like maybe three years to get like five or six leaves. Again. Right. Yeah, again. So. Right. Um, that's the reason why it doesn't cut everything. Kuhu not germinate from the ground. It grow very slowly. So um, I think it will take like maybe 15 years I should say or 10 years maybe because they grow very slowly and when it reach the height like this that's still um, not enough to bear food as it so until it reached to a height of maybe 10 feet above the ground, then at that time it have a lot of leaves and then it start to bear flowers and then fruit. All right, all right, yeah. As we explained earlier, humans are a part of the forest ecosystem because we use many of the different plants and animals in the forest. For example, kuhun for touching our roofs and give not for our food. But we have to be careful that we do not break the links in the ecosystem. If we take too many of the cone trees or too many of the give not out of the forest, what do you think would happen to these links in the ecosystem? The answer is that the links will be broken. Breaking the link between the kuhun and the gibnat will affect many other plants and animals. By breaking these links, we will threaten the survival of the forest. With a fast-growing human population, some villages will double in size within the next 10 years. We will need more land, more kuhun, and more gibnat. We are in danger of breaking some of these links within our forest ecosystem without even realizing it. Slash and burn milpa and cutting all the leaves from the kuhun palm could result in less kuhun close to the villages. Leaves will start to cast more as we have to travel farther to cut them. We are losing forests around villages as they are converted to farmland. As a result, there are less and less places for gibnuts to live and feed. When we combine this with too much hunting of gibnut, we are again finding that we have to travel farther and farther to find gibnut. Because of this, gibnut meat will start to cast more. So, think back to the link between Kuhun and gibnut. What will happen? if either of these is removed. Kuhun and Gibnat are just a small part of the whole ecosystem. There are thousands of other links which we human can affect. We have a responsibility and a need to protect these links. We have a responsibility to allow our children to use this same forest for their food, for their clean water, for building their homes and for traditional use. We live close to the forest and we rely on it every day, even if we do not actually use it every day. If the forest does not survive, this will eventually threaten our own survival and that of our children. It is up to us to protect our forest.
The Yaksha Conservation Trust is working on a project that will recognize farmers who are, who are practicing sustainable farming methods. Those awards will be handed out in the coming months. The news on the national channel. Today's engine technology demands an oil of choice for your vehicles, engines and equipment. PureGuard is available in Belize in light and heavy automotive, hydraulic and automatic transmission lubricants in all current oil grades and specifications. Certified by the American Petroleum Institute, API, PureGuard is exclusively distributed in Belize by West Track Limited. So, give your engine the treatment it deserves by using PureGuard products and lubricants. PureGuard, premium products that will perform for you. Are you always on the go? Tired of missing your favorite games while they're actually being played? Watch your games and sporting events live with Central TV and Internet's incredible My TV. Simply log on to www.mitv.bz to get easy access to 25 channels, no matter where you are. With Central TV and Internet's My TV, you're always in the game. Gusty easterly airflow currently prevailing over our area will become drier this weekend. The general forecast for Belize and her coastal waters is for a few showers and isolated thunderstorms, mostly over southern and coastal areas tonight and tomorrow morning. Winds will blow from the east uh, at 10 to 20 knots with higher gusts. The sea state will be moderate to rough. Operators of small craft should exercise caution in rough seas. Low temperatures tonight will be 78 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 73 degrees Fahrenheit inland and a cool 70 degrees Fahrenheit up in the hills. Saturday's high temperatures will be 87 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 92 degrees Fahrenheit inland and a warm 82 degrees Fahrenheit up at the exposed areas of the mountain Pine Ridge and along the Maya Mountains in the south. The tides. There will be a high tide at 19 minutes to 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. A low tide follows at 7 minutes past 6 o'clock also in the morning. The sun will rise at 19 minutes past 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. It will set at 6.29 tomorrow evening. The extended forecast valid through to Sunday afternoon is for some cloudy spells with showers or thunderstorms being generally isolated. And that's a look at the weather with information provided by forecaster Michael Gentle at the Belize Weather Bureau. And for the latest on the hurricane season, here is the tropical weather update. The governor of Missouri has declared a state of emergency, and you can see why. This is what the remnants of Tropical Depression Bill have been doing. Several inches of rain falling in Missouri, and we've already been talking a lot about the problems into Oklahoma as well as Texas. Speaking of Texas, this is where Bill officially made landfall on Tuesday as a tropical storm on Matagorda Island with 60 mile per hour winds. But now here we are at the end of the week, and we're still talking about rainfall to come. Eastern Oklahoma, another couple of inches, and easily seeing two to three inches into sections of Missouri. We still got more than 16 million people under some type of flood threat as we round out the week. And you can see spots across southern Illinois, Kentucky, and Indiana could easily pick up three to five inches. Very heavy rainfall expected through Friday. To summarize the news, here are the headlines again. Major flooding reported in the Toledo District. Speednet wins appeal versus the Public Utilities Commission. And preparations begin for Belize International Film Festival. With the headlines, we end this edition of the 9 o'clock news. 
As we head out this Friday evening, we hope that you and your family will have a safe and an enjoyable weekend. Join us back here on Monday night for another broadcast. Thank you for joining us. I am Patrick Jones. Have a good evening and a good night.